Okay, good day. Proceed tayo sa remainder theorem at sa factor theorem. Yung gusto natin matutunan sa lesson na to ay kung paano gamitin yung factor at remainder theorem sa polynomials to help us determine yung zeros ng polynomials sa yung kanilang mga remainders. Okay, so start tayo with the review ng long division. So if you have x to the fourth plus 20, the divide natin ng x squared plus 2x minus 2, we could write it like this. And this, we call this the divisor. This will be the quotient, the result ng division, yung dinidivide natin yung dividend. So what we do is, we start with x to the fourth divided by x squared. So, well, dapat magkatapat, no? You get x to the fourth divided by x squared. You get x squared, x squared times x squared, negative x to the fourth. Tapos x squared times 2x, magiging 2x cubed. So minus 2x cubed x squared times negative 2, magiging negative 2x squared. So subtract natin siya dun sa nasa taas, kaya siya may negative. Makuha tayo ng bagong dividend. We continue the division until yung degree nung, nung di-divide natin, mas mababa na dun sa divisor. In which case, it becomes the remainder. So, if that was too fast, you might want to review your long division of polynomials and the synthetic division. So, yung x to the fourth plus 20 divided by x squared plus 2x minus 2, this expression, this rational expression, Pwede natin siyang isulat ngayon after nung division natin as the quotient x squared minus 2x plus 6 plus the remainder divided by the divisor. Kasi di-divide mo pa rin siya eh. Hindi lang natin ma-divide kasi mas mataas na yung degree ng divisor. Kung baga lowest terms na yung fraction na to. So this is the quotient plus the remainder divided by the divisor. These two are equal. Now, from this expression, ang pwede kong gawin ay i-multiply yung both sides no, ng divisor, x squared plus 2x minus 2. So, that will cancel out dito sa left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, yung quotient natin, multiply yung divisor. Tapos yung remainder natin, mawawala yung divisor dito. Magka-cancel out then after yung multiplication ng divisor sa both sides. So, in a way, yung expression na x to the fourth plus 20, na isulat natin siya as the product of two polynomials plus another polynomial na remainder. This is important. Say we have something that we call the division algorithm for polynomials. So, briefly, kunyari, meron tayong f of x at p of x na parehong polynomials, tapos yung p of x is a non-zero polynomial. Then, pag dinivide natin si f ni p, magkakaroon tayo ng quotient, plus remainder over P, kasi P is the divisor. Tapos, yung quotient na yan at yung remainder na yan, they are unique polynomials. Tapos, yung remainder, pwede siyang zero. Kung hindi naman siya zero, definitely dapat yung degree ng R of X mas mababa na sa degree ng divisor natin na polynomial, P of X. And we can rewrite this expression, similar dun sa naunang example, na mag-multiply tayo ng P of X sa both sides, we could rewrite it as f of x equals the quotient times the divisor plus the remainder. And this is what we call the division algorithm. Now, on the remainders, let us divide polynomial f of x by a linear binomial x minus c. So we have f of x over x minus c. Using the division algorithm, yung division na yun, ng f of x by the x minus c, pwede natin siyang isulat as f of x equals x minus c, the divisor, times the quotient q of x, plus the remainder. Okay, bakit yung remainder natin constant d na lang? Bakit hindi siya polynomial function din? Kasi yung remainder, dapat yung degree niya mas mababa sa divisor. Ano ba degree ng divisor? Degree 1. So ano ba ang mas mababa sa degree 1? Degree 0. Ano ba yung degree 0? Constant. So the remainder here is a constant. Yan, ito pala. Since the divisor is degree 1, the remainder is degree 0, which means it's a constant. Evaluating f of x at c, ito yung gusto natin gawin. What is f of c? But f of c is equal to c minus c, c minus c, times q of c plus d. Evaluating a function at a value, papalitan natin lahat ng x dun sa function with that value. So, pinalitan natin lahat ng x with c. Now, it turns out that this first term, yung x minus c times q of x, may c minus c times q of c. And c minus c is zero. So, matikira lang sa atin yung remainder. And this is very important. This leads us to our remainder theorem. If a polynomial f of x is divided by x minus c, dinivide siya ng x minus c, 
Yung remainder niyan is just the value of the function evaluated at C. Again, if we divide the function by x minus C, meron siyang remainder, yung remainder na yun, pareho lang sa kapag evaluate natin si function at C. Quick example, we want to find the remainder no? when this function, x to the fourth minus 3x cubed plus 7x squared minus x plus 1, is divided by x minus 1. So I could set up a long division exercise para mahanap yung remainder na 5, or I could use the remainder theorem. To find the remainder when divided by x minus 1, I can just evaluate this by 1. Okay, so f of 1, dali lang yun. It's just 1 minus 3 plus 7 minus 1 plus 1. 1 minus 3 plus 7 minus 1 plus 1, we get 5. So this is a slightly shorter solution than if we perform long division or maybe even if we perform synthetic division. Although normally synthetic division will be slang. Okay, another example. We want to evaluate this function at 6. Parang substitute natin yung 6 dyan. If we want to do it the hard way, then we'll just substitute 6 sa lahat ng x. Isa-isahin natin i-evaluate. Siyempre, ito, kinalculator ko na to dahil nakakatamad, di ba? But, tama naman yan. f of 6 is equal to 3. But you have to go through 6 to the 4th, 6 cubed, 6 squared. Mumultiply nga pa sa coefficients para makarating dun sa value na yun. Using the remainder theorem, alam natin na if we divide this by x minus 6, kung ano man yung remainder na yun, ito din yun. Dapat 3 din makukuha natin. So, we'll just divide this by x minus 6 using synthetic division. Baka mas madali. So, quick review, no, kung paano mag-synthetic division. Yung first row, ito yung coefficients ng ating dividend. So, 1, negative 4, negative 21, 61, negative 39. Sa left side, ilalagay natin yung C ng divisor natin. So, x minus 6, this will be 6. We bring down the first number, multiply 6 times 1. Put na, lalagay natin dito yung product. I-add natin. So, 6 plus negative 4, we get 2. 2 times 6, we get 12. 12 minus 21, we get negative 9. Negative 9 times 6, we get negative 54. 61 plus negative 54, we get 7. 7 times 6, 42. 42 plus negative 39, we get the remainder 3. This is our remainder, so consistent siya sa dalawa. So in the previous example, mas madali mag-substitute. In this example, mas madali mag-synthetic division. So the remainder theorem allows us to interchange between the two approaches. Okay, one last example. Find f of 4 for this expression. So, nakita na natin na pwede natin siyang i-divide at kunin yung remainder. So, we divide by x minus 4. So, 1, 1, negative 27, 31, negative 12. 4 yung divisor. So, 1, 1 times 4, 4, plus 1, 5, 5 times 4, 20, plus negative 27, negative 7, times 4, negative 28, plus 31, 3, 3 times 4 is 12, plus negative 12, we get 0. So, ano na-realize natin dito? 0 yung remainder, which means factorable siya ng x minus 4. Ano implication nun? f of 4 is 0 by the remainder theorem. This implies that x minus 4 is a factor nitong function na to, at 4 is a 0 of this function. Which leads us to the factor theorem. A polynomial function f of x will have a factor x minus c if and only if f of c equals 0. So, meron siyang factor na x minus c kung 0 si c. Conversely, since if and only if, kung 0 si c, pwede mo siyang i-factor ng x minus c. So, let's apply that. They want to find the polynomial function f of x with zeros na 3, negative 2, and 4. Yun lang naman. Wala naman sinabing leading coefficient. Walang sinabing degree. So, let's just do the minimum. Using the factor theorem, alam natin na kung ano man tong function na to, meron siya dapat factor na x minus 3, x plus 2, tsaka x minus 4. So, using those three factors, we could multiply them together, magsali tayo ng isang leading coefficient, di naman masama. Actually, we could add another factor here na wala naman sa problem, okay lang din. And we'll get this expression. So, since walang restriction, bahala na tayo kung gagamitin nating value kay A. So, pwede natin piliin negative 3. Wala lang. Pwede rin 2, pwede 1 para tapos na. But let's choose negative 3. So, we have a function f of x equals negative 3x cubed 
plus 15x squared plus 6x minus 72, sure tayo na meron siyang zeros na 3, negative 2, at positive 4. So other answers are possible. Let's add more restrictions dun sa previous example. You want a quartic polynomial f of x from 0 to 3, negative 2, and 4, na ang end behavior ay decreasing as x approaches infinity and ang y-intercept ay negative 1, degree 4. Decreasing yung function habang x approaches positive infinity. So we'll have to make use yung alam natin sa end behaviors. Tapos i-co-control natin yung y-intercept. So, using the factor theorem, alam natin na may factor siya na x minus 3, x plus 2, at x minus 4. Since quartic siya, pwede tayo magsali ng isa pang 0, x minus b. So, thus, meron tayong ganito. Meron tayong leading coefficient na hindi pa natin alam kung ano. We may need to use it. Pwede hindi rin. Since the function is decreasing as x approaches positive infinity, alam natin na kung bumababa yung value ng function as x increases or as, as x approaches positive infinity, the leading coefficient must be negative. Yung y-intercept naman, siya yung value ng function when x equals 0. So, f of 0 will have 0 lahat ng x. That will just be a times negative 3 times 2 times negative 4 times negative b. We can choose no, a value for a and b kahit ano. Kasi yun lang naman yung conditions eh, na masasatisfy yun. Kailangan negative si a Tapos, yung product nitong lahat ay negative 1. And this will be our function. f of x is negative 1 over 6 times x minus 3 times x plus 2 times x minus 4 times x plus 1 4. Hindi naman sinabing kailang expand. So, we can leave it na factored form. Let's just check the graph using GeoGebra. This is the graph no input ko siya. We'll have zeros at negative, sorry, at 3 at negative 2 and at 4. Yung end behavior natin is it approaches negative infinity as x approaches infinity. Tapos ang y-intercept niya ay negative 1. So, na-satisfy lahat ng conditions ng example natin. So, to end the lesson, ang remainder theorem, sinasabi niya sa atin na pag-evaluate natin yung polynomial function ng C, yun din yung, yung result nun is the remainder pag dinivide natin yung function ng x minus C. Vice versa, pag dinivide natin yung function ng x minus C, kung ano man yung remainder, siya rin yung, mo, yung value ng polynomial function na yun pag in-evaluate natin siya at C. So, f of C. Next, yung factor theorem, it builds on the remainder theorem. Sinasabi niya, pag in-evaluate mo yung function at C, at 0 siya, so 0 yung C, then factor C x minus C. The opposite direction is also true. Pag dinivide mo siya ng x minus c at walang remainder, zero nung function na yun, c, c. So, thank you very much and I'll see you sa next lesson.